Welcome to the channel, Ajayden Chase. Now, if you're new, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Now, while the government has stated that they do not have the funds to either update the infrastructure of the country or even run the country on a day-to-day -day basis, then can even keep a local government election. It has been exposed that the state has collected over 80 billion from Jamaican taxpayers. So now the question is, where is that money? Now amidst the thought that corruption exists within the ruling party. Now I'm going to go and continue reasoning. Look at this. You be patient with Desmond McKenzie, Jamaica. Will you be patient? But then I hear a voice out of the wilderness of the opposition. Why, Julian, you make me sound like me could have a little hope in the opposition today. Here, Julian, Jamaica. Madam Speaker, I, I didn't plan to speak, but when I saw item three in the memorandum of objects and reasons, I had to get up. And I'm going to tell you why I get up. To create applause on this side, every time the Minister of Finance comes to Parliament, he announces how well the economy is doing. And let me remind you, for the fiscal year that we are in, the government has collected over $80 billion above its own estimates. The tax revenues, $80 billion. $80 billion. $80 billion. I say it because it is all of Jamaica who pays it in more GCT, in SCT on imports, all of Jamaica, right? 80 billion more this financial year. Madam Speaker, the cost of holding an election is about $1.5 billion. In the height of COVID, when the economy fell by 13% of GDP, when we had to close our airports and seaports, when we lost our tourism industry, the government called a general election. Yes. Yeah. September 2020, early, when the economy had lost 13% of GDP, and we lost billions of dollars in revenue. So for you to come here with Them this lie. reason, number three, this on the paper, lie. when the budget table last week, Them last week budget, I don't know if you read it yet, draw business, draw business. It's better you never put this on the paper, this one. It's better you never put this on the paper. Who wouldn't talk? Yeah. Madam Speaker, a government has a responsibility to budget for an election. They have a responsibility in good times and bad times. Madam Speaker, in good times and bad times, you have a responsibility to budget for an election. This election was known. It never catch anybody like Nicodemus in the night. It is overdue. The government has the revenues to do it. But the government afraid to face the people. They are afraid to face the people. And you come here with this reason about economic uncertainty. When last week you were trumpeting how the financial times say you have a miracle, stand innovation, how great the economy is doing, and you put on paper economic reasons for not calling the election. I say shame. Yeah, man. I said, shame. Yeah. Face the people. Yeah. Let the people then decide. Yeah. Let the people decide. Yeah. So I stand in opposition to this. Yeah. The minister don't even believe what I said. Oh, yeah. He don't even believe what he really said. You never plan to bring it here. Parliament adjourn and we have to come back and you come bring it here. Oh, yeah. We must do better than this. Yeah. We know the same people's fault. We have had it on both sides. But we made a departure yeah. when we brought the three strategic bills from, for that very reason. Can you know? we say one, a minister can just whimsically keep postponing local government elections? Right? This is very serious, of course. Is Jamaica in a situation where no matter how much GDP is generated, no matter how much billions are collected in taxes, it seems as if 
the money can't do nothing for the island. Now, the country has reached a point where the budget is a trillion dollars and it is still less than the previous budget and the value of the dollar that. It is now way beyond the point of wondering if the resources are not being handled in the right way. If you can have a trillion, a historic trillion dollar budget. This is not North America, this is not a first world country. And there's a trillion dollar budget in a country still without road or access to certain places. Electricity is still not in a certain place in a St. Elizabeth. Why is that so important? St. Elizabeth was one of the first places in the Caribbean to have electricity. That's why it's important. Or if you have places in a St. Elizabeth, we don't have no electricity. And that was one of the first places in the entire Caribbean. Not Jamaica. Not a mistake. Not Jamaica. The entire Caribbean. I know you still have some place in the parish. The bread basket. We don't have no electricity. This is what we mean when we are say management of the resources. You know the parish where the people might grow the most ground provisions. Them now have no special tax breaks for them. Them now have no infrastructure for the people who even can transport them goods properly. And talk always about the tourism industry. I mean, I feel like the tourism industry is being managed to its full potential. Either it's just that the minister for the sector and the sector is doing good. Can't go around it. I'm going to feel like entertainers and entertainment need to step it up. Because sometimes I still wonder why tourism now incorporate more entertainers and entertainment. You know, whatever they might do with tourism. But some of these entertainers' music are not, not up to par. Some of these songs are not entertaining. Some of these entertainers are not entertaining. Even the selector, they know the people might complain. So, okay, as I say, there's no support. For dancehall music. With almost every other genre of music has taken elements from the dancehall and reggae. And it's now doing better than dancehall. Look on reggae. Reggae is still incorporated in everything way. The tourism industry do. Them now left out reggae. The industry never does choose reggae over dancehall. Them see how people internationally react to reggae as opposed to dancehall. More international fans of Jamaican music can name reggae artists than they can name dancehall artists. And this is just a fact. Most of our famous reggae entertainers are way more known than our dancehall entertainers. But that just simply means that dancehall entertainers need to try to elevate the music. I would reggae already doing so well if dancehall could get on that level where reggae is right now. It's not good for the country. I mean, but would I say the tourism, tourism sector more do that push there for dancehall? Because the, the push for dancehall really want from the state and the tourism sector. The country is also full of abundant resources. All different type of things. Here, the country involved in a provision, ground provision, who grow things. All I want to start looking to turning these things or grow into products, which would be an, an entire different industry. Look at I employ millions of Jamaicans. And we can there so know that. How come the elected officials can't see it? Or them can't make steps towards that? Something if you do about the import export sector. How them no know? These are individuals that study political sciences. How them no know? Unless them do know. And them feel like them know a better way. But is their way the way the people may elect them? Want them to do it? Remember, them can have their own way of doing things. But not when you have been elected to do something for the people. 
Tell me what you think. If you're new to the channel, so pass through, click the subscribe icon, then the bell icon, and of course, put it on all. And this is how you know will be notified of all fresh content as soon as fresh content is uploaded and made available for you right here on the platform. The like icon is also in close proximity to the share icon. Drop a like and boss a share. And tell a friend, tell a friend, tell them sister and them brother them for check out the channel, check out the reason, and of course, join the discussion. Now, of course, until the reason again, my sentiments for you and yours is of course for to live, love, and prosper. And for to stay tuned. Now, a quick recap. 80 billion was collected from Jamaican taxpayers. Rosalie Gage Gray was paid $12 million for someone else to become the CEO of the CPFSA agency. But the payoff was fully legit. And to the reason I get my sentiments for you and there is I'm going to live love and prosper. I'm going to stay tuned.